It is August 1997 and I have recently had the privilege of developing a new capsiorexis forceps for my cases with Ryan Medical here in Florida. I begin the capsiorexis with a bent 25 gauge needle on the Helon syringe, making a starter radial incision in the capsule and turning it to the right in a counterclockwise direction. The new capsiorexis forceps are hinged just proximal to the blades in the same plane as the blades and they have a gentle curve over the uh, anterior lens surface and have the Kirschner tips which can be used to start the capsulorexis using the pinch technique. The handle is rounded so that the capsulorexis forceps can be rotated uh, in the fingers for precise control and the handle is also hinged which comes apart at the very proximal end for cleaning and for adjusting the tension of the forceps to suit the surgeon. The capsulorexis is done under helon in most cases in several stages as you can see, making sure to turn the anterior flap over on its back and using the flap itself as a guide to try to make the capsulorexis as circular as possible, although that is not uh, really necessary as long as the rexis is continuous. As you can see, I regrasp after several uh, stages uh, in order to keep the flap length somewhat short. And I try here at the conclusion uh, of the rexis to make sure the uh, last stage is slightly outside or in line with uh, the beginning stage so that this uh, beginning and end point junction is as smooth as possible. I also try to make the capsulorexis a little larger than I used to, attempting to make the rexis now about five millimeters uh, to cover a six millimeter optic IOL. Hydrodissection is then performed after Howard Fine's technique of cortical cleaving hydrodissection, attempting to uh, place uh, the tip of the cannula just inside the uh, capsule and directing the wave between the capsule and the cortex. For most cases, I try not to hydro express the nucleus, but as soon as I see the nucleus rise up out of the bag, knowing that there is BSS behind the nucleus, I will then stop injecting and tamponade the nucleus back through the capsulorexis into the capsular bag. In cases of one plus nuclear sclerosis, very soft nuclei or PSC cataract, I will hydroexpress the nucleus and perform supracapsular phaco, provided that there are no guttata or signs of uh, corneal disease or low endothelial cell count. So for most of my cases of two plus uh, and three plus uh, nuclear sclerosis, I'm still performing uh, by choice, uh, John Shepard style, four quadrant, uh, in situ, uh, groove and fracture uh, technique. I begin by removing the uh, cortex and epinucleus that is exposed through the capsular axis with the uh, maxi cobra tip. Uh, and as you can see, this is a uh, cobra design phaco tip from surgical design with the spiral sleeve which uh, helps to prevent corneal wound burn and also is soft enough to provide a good seal to maintain a good anterior chamber. I use a Barricare iris spatula in my left hand to rotate the nucleus when I'm using the uh, Shepherd style four quadrant groove and fracture technique. And I will reserve Faco Chop, the standard uh, Paul Koch stop and chop modification of the Nagahara technique for three plus and four plus nuclei. At the beginning here, I'm carrying out these grooves slightly beyond the margin of the capsular rexis uh, for easy fracturing. The superficial excursion of the phaco tip is only to the margin of the capsular rexis uh, so that I will avoid uh, creating an anterior tear. Uh, in the anterior capsule with the uh, phaco tip. During that groove phase, my aspiration level is set at eight cc's per minute 
and the vacuum is at 24 millimeters of mercury with the FACO power at 30 percent. Following fracturing, I will then change the aspiration flow rate to 24 cc's per minute and raise the vacuum depending on the level of the nuclear sclerosis. For a 1 plus a soft lens, I'll set the vacuum at 100. For a 2 plus nuclear sclerosis, 200. For 3 plus, 300. And for 4 plus, when I'm going to do a uh, stop and chop uh, technique, 400 millimeters of mercury vacuum. Uh, however, I maintain the FACO power at 30%. This gives good holdability. The nice advantage to the four quadrant technique, as well as other nuclear divide and conquer techniques, including stop and chop, is that the pieces of nucleus are usually smaller than the capsular rexus and can do no damage to the rexus as they're aspirated through. Every attempt is made to keep the phaco tip low at the level of the capsular rexus to minimize uh, phaco energy going to the endothelium. In position one, under irrigation, I can use the spatula to mobilize the uh, cleaved hydrodissected cortex so that I can aspirate it with the phaco tip and get a fairly clean uh, capsule uh, approximately 55% of the time. The viscoelastic is then injected into the capsule, which distends the bag and recircularizes the rexus. And I prefer to use the plate haptic lens from Star through this 2.65 millimeter incision, <coughs> which has probably expanded to 2.85 following FACO. Therefore, the cartridge tip will not uh, enter the anterior chamber, and the leading haptic will enter the capsular bag leaving the trailing haptic outside of the bag uh, in the anterior chamber. It is a simple matter then of using the Barricare Iris spatula that I use during FACO to depress the optic haptic junction uh, carefully over this uh, capsular axis uh, junction in order to uh, place both haptics uh, in the capsular bag. Uh, now is the time when we can gauge the actual size of the capsular rexus because we know the diameter of the lens, which in this case is uh, 6.0 millimeters. So I can estimate that this capsular rexus is probably a little smaller than I had thought. It's about four and a half millimeters in diameter, looking larger due to corneal and microscopic magnification, uh, and probably because this is not a fully dilated or maximally dilated pupil. It's important, as you know, to remove all the remaining cortical elements as much as possible, and I use a 0.2 millimeter small port IA tip for this purpose, uh, and make sure that I go under the optic uh, in most cases in order to remove the viscoelastic that may be remaining in the capsular bag in order to avoid postoperative viscoelastic entrapment syndrome. This can occur with any capsular axis with any lens, PMMA, three-piece, three-piece silicones, and one-piece plate haptic lenses. And this virtually completes the procedure. This has been an, uh, a complete and unedited case, and you can see that the uh, implant will center well in this nice circular capsular axis.